The next idea is uh, what do we mean by the basic structures that we know very well about the sets? Like what is an open set, what is a closed set? And the idea that we need to discuss right now, because we can discuss open and closed sets in topology as well, but right now we are going to discuss what are basically compact sets and what are sequentially compact sets. Because those compact sets have some relationship with the sequences. So in real analysis, you build the sequences and with the help of sequences, you define what is uh, limit of a function, what is the continuity of a function in terms of sequences. Otherwise, you can define continuity in the terms of epsilon delta definition as well. But in real analysis, the main motive is to discuss functions, but they always start from sequences. Because they apply sequences to uh, prove their properties and so on. So what is an open set? An open set is a set which is open. Yes, sir. A closed set is a sort set which is closed. Yes. And that's all. So uh, to define these notions, uh, let me discuss what is an open ball. This is the key, key thing in and topology or real analysis of uh, topology of real line or R2 or R3. So what's an open ball? Uh, what do I mean by this? An open ball, and if we talk about ball, we should always have a center, and let's say the center is X, yes. and we must have something else what we call radius, and the radius is, let's say epsilon, how do I define it? Boundary now here, I go. Yes. Boundary now here, or radius. Yes, yes. Mathematically, how to define it? So radius x minus r. It is set of all the points, let's say y. It's set of points. You are uh, open ball is set of points. In your space that you are dealing with, let me call that space to be R, R, X, R, R1, R2, R3, whatever I am naming it. RD. Because RD is generalized for R1, R2, R3. R1 is your line, R2 is your two dimensional plane, R3 is your space, three dimensional. Such that what happens? The distance between this point and the center. I can write it as y minus x or x minus y, doesn't make any difference. Uh, not minus, but I write this. Distance between y and x. I write distance because it is generalized notion. In R1, the distance is y minus x, the mod of y minus x. In R2, it is x2 minus x1, y2 minus x. In R3, we have the same idea. Should be less than the radius. Okay. And if it, if it is less than or equal to, we call this closed ball. So this is the definition. So you, minus or which is it? Y minus x? No, no, this is y comma x. Y comma. Because you wrote distance, so that's between two points. This is a definition of an open ball. So this is a generalized idea. So Rd is representing any region. And Rd is not region. Rd represents either R1, or R2, R3, and so on. But we, uh, we always discuss R1, R2, R3 only because we don't have any representation for R4. But you can apply this concept for any finite dimensional uh, R, whether it is R10 or R100 or whatever. So this is the definition of open ball. But we should always discuss what is this open ball in R1? What is this open ball in R2? What is this open ball in R3. So let me tell you, in R1, this open ball is open interval. In R1, open ball is open interval. You have this line R1, and you have this center to be x, the radius to be, let's say this is x plus epsilon, and this is x minus epsilon. So the radius is, let me call this thing to be radius. This is epsilon, and your center is X. X. So you call an open ball to be an open interval in R1. So this is set of all the points y. If you take any point y here, 
you find its distance from x, it will always be less than epsilon. You take any y here inside this interval. Mm -hmm. You find its distance from x, it will be less than epsilon. Yes, sir. And how would you convert this one? You will convert <coughs> Rd to R1. And this distance notion is written as this when you are talking about open intervals. Yes, sir. So in R1, an open ball is an open interval. What is an open ball in R2? Circular. Circular, but what do we call it? It's not circular. Disc. 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 We call it disc. Because disc is uh, two dimensional and circle is one dimensional one manifold. Dimension. So when we talk about circle, it's one dimensional. When we talk about disc, it's two dimensional. So it's an open disc. It's an open disc. disc. It means, let's say this is the open disc. This is, let's say, its center, and this is its uh, radius epsilon. You take any point in this open disk, not on the boundary, mm -hmm. in the open disk, you find its distance from this x, it will always be less than epsilon. So, the case of R2 is open disk when we talk about open balls in R2. What about R3? Spare. It's an open, open sphere. In R3, it's an open sphere. Like you have... This is an open sphere, this is its center. And you find the distance. This, this is epsilon. You take any point. Its distance from this x should be less than epsilon. And this boundary is not included. If you include the boundary, you just give a line like this. Close, close it, bro. Yes. If you include the boundary, we call it closed ball. And you, write, you do like this. This is closed. This is closed. And in R1, this is closed. Sometimes in R1, the open is written in this way. You know very well, this is open in general. Yes, sir. So these are some sort of open balls in R1. So in R1. I think we are distance in more rotation. It is only in R1. So in R2, you, the distance would be you will pick two points. two points. Your y point would be your y point would be something like this. Y1, Y2. Mm. And your x center would be something like this. X1, X2. And you write your distance to be this. Uh, let's say y1 minus x1 or x1 minus y1 plus y2 minus x2. It should be less than so the right distance like this. Yes, sir. For three component we are using. Yes, for three we, are, we can use that. Okay, so this is what we call an open ball. Yes, sir. This thing is also called, an open ball is also called epsilon neighborhood. The neighborhood of a center. I'm not talking about open neighborhood. I'm just neighborhood of a center. <coughs> uh, this is the notion that we should understand and we should visualize in reality. Uh, I live in this uh, or colony. This is my neighborhood. How can I call this to be my neighborhood? I live in Pakistan. Any sufficient condition that shows that I live in Pakistan. I live in Sindh. It implies that I live in Pakistan. I live in Khairpur. It is sufficient to say that I live in Pakistan. So, this is the condition that Pakistan or this whole world or something else is called my neighborhood when inside your neighborhood you can find out some open ball or open disc or whatever in which you live okay so i call pakistan to be my neighborhood if i can find a city in pakistan in which i live yes, sir. if i live in like uh, new delhi it does not imply that i live in pakistan because that particular set does not uh, belong to Pakistan. So, 
neighborhood of a point or set of a point. So let's say M. M is a set. And if I talk about R1, I will write this. M is a set which is part of R, R1. R1 is called a neighborhood of a point X. Let me write here X. If there exists some epsilon positive such that any open ball of radius epsilon, so ball of radius epsilon around point X is totally contained in your set. So is it okay? I have a set, let's say this is the set M and this X, this M for this x is the neighborhood. The neighborhood of this x is this m. Why it is neighborhood? Because around this x I can find an open ball of radius epsilon yes, such that this open ball Blast. is totally contained in, in the m. m. Then I call this m to be the neighborhood of point x. x. It's very simple notion. And an open bar itself, an open bar around X itself is a neighborhood of X. Is it so? Because inside this open bar, I can find out another open bar inside it with some smaller radius such that it is totally contained in that one. So, uh, we can say that this open interval or open disk or open sphere or open ball in general itself is a neighborhood of all the points inside it. inside it all the points inside it for example we have a closed interval and i take the boundary point this <coughs> one is this set a neighborhood of this point no or if i take any point on this boundary because i cannot find any epsilon and an open ball of this radius so that this open ball is totally contained in this one. It's not possible. We call it the boundary point or something else. <laughs> okay. Is this set never out of zero? Never out of? This need not to be open. It's a set which totally contains this point yes, and if you, if you find any ball of any radius around zero, it will totally be contained in this one. Yes. Then this is called my neighborhood, neighborhood of point zero. Neighborhood set is another ball, you are finding another ball. Neighborhood is a set and that set is the neighborhood of a point that is concerned with that. Topology is a solo you. Yes, sir. So, if you have a bully, you open bar and the bully is match. You can't get a sign. You can't get a set topology. R1 G topology. R1 G, R2 G, R3. This is relatively easy to understand. One of the set signs is that you have set ideas and properties. If you have a set of ideas, you can't get a set of ideas. You can't get a set of ideas. You can't get a set of ideas. You have to find out okay, the set of ideas. You have to check each and every property. It's very difficult for me, I think. <coughs> so, is this neighborhood of <coughs> uh, neighborhood of uh, two? No. Because two lies on the boundary. Yes, yes, yes. So this set is not neighborhood of two. And if this set is neighborhood of zero, we call zero to be the interior point of this. We call zero to be the interior point of this set. And I always give one example like I am a point and this room is my is my uh, uh, what we call neighborhood. 
then what can I do? I can open my arms and I will still lie on this room. Then I call this room to be my neighborhood. Uh, then I will be the interior point of this room. I'm inside room and I have some space to open my arms. It's not that, okay, I open my arms fully. It's somehow I can open my arms so that I have some boundary to rotate in some sort of circle. Yes, then I say that this set or this room is my neighborhood and I'm the interior point of this set. If I stand on the boundary, then I can open my interior arm. But if I open my right arm, then I will be outside of the room. Yes, so then I say, that, okay, this set is not my neighborhood or I'm not the interior point of this set if I stand on the boundary. So if you have some, uh, some region to open your arms inside that set, then that set is your neighborhood. definitions regarding open and closed box and we are going to discuss what we call compact sets. So definition M is called open in R, R means R1, if what happens for all X in that set M, whatever it is, M is neighborhood of uh, those points X. Or in other words, for all X in my set, there exists some epsilon positive such that you take any ball around X of radius epsilon which is totally contained in your set then we call this set to be open. So this is the concise definition of an open, uh, open set that M is called open. This is a set in some region. It is called open. If for all X inside that M, uh, there, is an, there is a neighborhood of X, or for all X in M, there, there exists some epsilon positive such that you draw any ball of radius epsilon around x which is totally contained in it. The simple example is an open interval. You take any point x, you can draw an open ball and you know very well an open ball in R1 is an interval yes. which is totally contained in that one. And you know very well if this is the interval this is not open because this is the point which is inside the set M but if I draw an open ball around it, it is not totally contained in this set. Yes. So this is, a, this is a set which is not open. And what do we mean by closed set? So A is closed. The definition is very simple. If and only if A complement is A set is closed if its complement is open. So is this set closed? A closed interval is closed. Why this is closed? Because I take complement of this. What is the complement? Complement is all the points from this A except A to minus infinity. This is the complement. And all the points from B to positive infinity. So negative infinity to A union B to positive infinity. This is A complement if this is your A. You can see that this is open. This is open, it means this A is closed. And how about this? Is this open or closed? So in the topology of R1, this is neither open nor closed. If you talk about some other notions, you call it 
semi open, semi closed. Yes, but in the sense of topology, it is neither open nor closed. So, how about phi and r? You have this set phi and you have this r. Are they open or closed? The open set open in the whole R, they are open as well as closed. Close. Close. But R is open, it's okay. How is it closed? <coughs> because you take its complement, it's going to be 5. Mm. And the final, we need to be so yes. open, open, open. Yes. no complement or not. Yes, that's a problem. That's a problem. So this is open as well as closed. Both are. Yes. So is R open? Open and closed at the same time. So it's not about open the door and close the door. The door is open, then it is not closed. The door is closed, then it is not open. This is some other notion. If it is open, it can be closed as well. And you know very well about the intervals. How about a finite set? Finite set. You know very well about the general, so I'm not going to write. I'm writing a finite set. Open, they are open. Finite set. Open or closed. These are only points. If you take R1, this is the point, and this is the point, and this is the point. That's all. Open or closed? Open. Sir, you make an open ball. Does this open ball lie in this set? Never. Never. This, will, this open ball will contain so many real numbers. So this is not open. Is it closed? Could we find it? Yes, and any finite set. Is it closed? <coughs> Close, what is the definition? These are three points mm -hmm. and you take their complement. The complement is all the points from minus infinity to this point and all the points from this to this and all the points from this to this and all the points from here to positive infinity. Is it open or closed? You know very well this is an open interval. This is an open interval, this is an open interval, this is an open interval. The union of open intervals is? Open. 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 The union of, uh, the countable union of open intervals is open. So, this, we don't know anything. The complement of this is open, hence this one is closed. A finite set. Okay, the singleton is closed now. Yes, all the singletons are closed. And I think if you take the... Uh, finite union of uh, singletons that's also closed. So this set is closed, not open. So finite set is closed. You say? Yes. Because you take its complement, it's open. Mm. You take its complement, it's open. Your singleton set is, let's say, the zero. What is the complement? The complement of this set is from minus infinity to zero, mm. union zero to infinity. You know that this is open, this is open, so the union is open, hence this one is It's a singleton set. So, let me write uh, some some sort of theorem or what we call a fact. Theorem. 
for all convergent sequences uh, let's say a n i'm taking all all sequences which are convergent and with with there is another property that every term of the sequence belongs to your set i have a set which is some sort of part of uh, r is called closed if and only if what happens i take all the sequences with their terms inside the set then what happens uh, for all n and n we have the limit of this sequence also belongs to your set this is one of the beautiful property you have a set let's say my set is this the open interval 0 to 1 uh, let me make this one closed i take the sequence a n which is 1 over n what is the first term of this sequence i have to check each and every property for all convergent sequences i have taken one sequence which is convergent you know very well the second property is it's all the terms lie in this set my set is this what is the first term lie in this one yes sir second term 1 over 2 here third term 1 over 3 here 1 over 4 and so on so all the terms of the sequence lie in this one what is the limit of the sequence zero zero does it lie in this one so it is not closed so what to when it closed yes yes it is closed then this happens yes yes i have taken this example by myself this limit the limit is zero which does not belong to your set this one hence it is not closed if this limit lies in this one we call that one to be closed always and we can apply this thing to define what we call a compact set we'll end after 15 to 20 minutes for a short break and then we'll resume after 15 or 20 minutes again so there are some alternate definitions for compact set but i'm writing a definition in this way so what is the definition of closed set you call it definition but it's a theorem you call it definition as well sir you the koi bhi closed interval from the I only have the five week sequence from the converge already. So the limit will exist. Even I mean, it's a minus one and one from the close and draw. I have converged the core of the minus one, one comma one kernel. It's a limit to exist. Close and draw from minus one and comma one. Open one, close one. Sorry, my son. I close my fair one. One or minus one to one thing. You can say it now. I can. He can. He closed that, right? Yeah. And for all convergent sequences, JK is a. In other words, there is a sequence coming here. Yeah. So the limit exists. Can be in any other. JK is a one that is all the time there. Yeah. All the time is there. All the limit is there. But I have given some. Do not. All the time is there. I have given some. Do not. No, no. This is the sequence. उंटर एग्जाम्पल मिली हो and it's not okay जरे every जी का लोचे तो काम है कि disprove करना you do only one thing सही है find counter example you are done so the definition is a set uh, is called compact if what happens if for all sequences a n b 
with their each and every term belong to the set A. The same thing is there, I think. There is a convergent subsequences, and there is a convergent subsequence. A and K, K is in the state of natural numbers, with the limit of this subsequence is K goes to infinity blocks to it. This is similar to that. So similar to that. So a set is called compact if you if for all sequences with all the terms in this set, there is a convergent subsequence. So you take a convergent subsequence of that sequence, then the limit of that convergent sequence must lie in your set. For example, again I take a no, sorry, I take a closed interval from A to B. Or from 0 to 1. My sequence is this. All the terms of the sequence lie in this one. Okay, I take any subsequence, let's say 1 over n square. Uh, 1 over n square or something like that. All the terms lie in this one. The limit is 0 that lies in this one, hence this set is compact. For all sequences means sir? For all sequences means you pick any sequence. It may or may not be convergent. We are not okay with that. But you find its convergent subsequences. And if the limit of the convergent subsequence belongs to your set A, then you call your set to be compact. So what sets are compact and what sets are not compact? Let us do some examples. Sequentially compact set. Because in sequentially compact set, you use the notion of definitions, uh, notion of sequences to define compactness. <coughs> Otherwise, there is another alternate definition of compactness as well. But it is a theorem that if a set is complex, uh, compact, it is sequentially compact. If it is sequentially compact, then it is compact. So, what is a sequentially compact set which satisfies this property? This is in terms of sequences. And if a set is sequentially compact, it is compact. But the alternate definition of compact is you, you uh, find some cover for a set such that for a, every open cover that completely covers your set. So this is alternate definition. Maybe we will do it in topology. But we should only keep this thing in our mind right now. OK, some examples for compact sets. The main problem is, is R compact or not? R compact. R compact or not? R is open. R is closed. R is open. R is closed. Is R compact or not? You, when you deal with some physical problems, and when you, when you are stuck in some problems, you are good at open sets. Then you define, okay, let us do some sort of closed sets. These are good for physical problems in some sense. Then if both of these things will not uh, satisfy you in real world problems, then you define something new, what you call compact sets. And R is not compact. Uh, no, no, no. R is not compact. Why R is not compact? Because <coughs> you take all sequences. One sequence I take is this. Yes, you take any subsequence. The subsequence that I am taking is the same one for now. Because the sequence itself is a subsequence. And uh, what happens that every term of your sequence, subsequence or sequence belongs to your set. Mm -hmm. So I put n is equal to 1, it's a real number. Yes, n is equal to 2, real number. n is equal to 3, real number. Its, it's limit must lie in R. What is the limit? Infinity. Infinity. Does not belong to R. Not complete. Not complete. 
I am not talking about the limit should be finite or infinite. Whatever the limit is, yes, it must lie in your set. Set. It does not lie. So R is not compact. Not compact. This is the problem with R. Otherwise, it's good. Yes. Singleton set is compact. Why? Limit lies. You take any sequence yes, sir. with all the terms in that set. So the sequence that I can think of is only one sequence with term A. This is my sequence. So first term is A, yes, sir. second term is A, third term is A. All terms belong to your set. What is the limit? A, A, A. belongs to your set. That's, that's complete. All sequences means all sequences that you can make and you can think of. And the only possibility is a single, single sequence single that is A. And the yes. next good thing is, if C is, let's say, less than or equal to D, then any uh, closed interval is compact. Always. Any closed interval is compact. Like in function analysis, what you do, you define some L2 spaces on R. Then you are not good, good with this, then you define L2 spaces on some compact sets. Because this will be good in some sense. Otherwise, in some physical problems, you are good with this one. If it does not satisfy you in physical problems, then you go for this. Because this set is compact. Okay, then we have a theorem which exactly defines the same thing, what we call heine borel theorem. I first time heard this and uh, this thing in my test of IBA. Uh, there was some statement and they were asking this statement is the theorem, is the statement for which theorem? The names were heine borel theorem, Cauchy's theorem. I thought, okay, Cauchy's theorem I know very well in complex. So this is not Cauchy's theorem. I just eliminated that option. The another was, I think, Euler's theorem. It's Euler's theorem for the homogeneous functions. I thought, okay, this is not this one. There was another one. So I just, okay, I don't know any Borel theorem, so this should be the option. So this thing happens sometimes. If you are good at two, three things, then you can do the things easily. And our complex was a bit good because of uh, my lanterns are. Okay, what is the statement of a Heine Borel theorem? So it's Heine Borel theorem. So it says that for A and R, A is compact. It means a set is compact if and only if that is closed, the set is closed, you can see the set is closed, and this one is also closed, we know very well, but there is additional property, it should be bounded, so if a set is closed and bounded, it's compact, this is closed, but not bounded, so it's not compact, this is closed, as well as bounded, so this set is compact, so this is the statement of an Borel theorem, we need not to prove it because we only need the statements for our exam point of view. It means that all bounded sets, it means all closed sets are closed. Closed and bounded. Closed and bounded. Closed and bounded. Yes, sir. That one is closed as well. R. Okay. It's not bounded. And all closed sets are compact. Closed and bounded. And bounded. This is closed as well as bounded. So it's compact. That's why compact. It means uh, what you call all closed intervals are bounded. Closed intervals. Because yes, closed intervals are also bounded. bounded. Yes, sir. Closed intervals are bounded. 